Back where we belong then at the top of the Jupiler Pro League. It is episode 2 of season 11 of RuPaul Boom or Bust and today we start our Champions League journey. Hello and welcome back and today Group D begins as we face Atletico Madrid and FC Copenhagen. We've already played one of our Champions League games which we drew, we'll come back to that in just a moment but we are also back to the top of the league. Before we jump in though, if you are enjoying these episodes, do please remember to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you are new. So then, what's happened in between episodes? We drew 0-0 with Zenit. It didn't start off very well. A 0-0 draw, Bakayoko getting injured, basically our strikers just did not perform in this one, and then we won everything else quite convincingly. 7-1 against KVK. In the Crokey Cup, we win this one 5-1, playing a very rotated side, although... Romelu Lukaku did score two in this one, both from the penalty spot, and a hat-trick for Matteo Sanino. And then 4-0 against Genk, Rosmerick, Montero, and Butikrit with the goals in this. So yeah, we are top of the table. We are one point clear. Yeah, just one point clear. Everyone has lost a game, bar us. And weirdly, KVU Stender, who are down in sixth place because they've drawn four matches out of seven Genk did, or Gent, sorry, did lose a game against KVK, which means they have dropped off the top of the table. But today, it is Champions League time. It's Atletico Madrid time. You probably know the starting lineup by now. It's Acosta, Luis, Nicolau, Solomon, and Gonzalez, Duvignac and Cabral, Montero and San Nino. And up front today, we've got a little change due to injuries. It's going to be Rosmerick partnering Romelu Lukaku today. Injuries, basically, we've got a few actually. Ladino, our sub goalkeeper, currently injured. Mats Lehmans, as we've mentioned, Bakiogo, Silva, and Radakovic, all out injured. And Joao Felipe, who was our third choice goalkeeper, isn't actually registered, which doesn't help me at all. So, other than the 0 0 draw against Zenit, we have started off the season very, very well. I think we might have draw, drawn the first game as well of the season. I'm hoping we can do something against Atletico. They're obviously a good side, but I think we're a good side as well. Not the start that we wanted, was it? Not the start that we were after at all. Montero is injured. First thing that happens, not even a highlight, first thing that happens, it's a lower leg injury. We can do plenty of changes here, can't we? What do we do? That's what we do. We move San Nino over to the right-hand side. We bring on Mohamed Boutacrit, who is actually really, really good. He's been out on loan at PSV last season, Lazio the season before. He's turned into a very good player. He's getting game time for us occasionally. Although they recommend him as a striker with 9 finishing and 10 work rate. I don't think he kind of fits the bill. But as a left winger, I think he's pretty good. He is kind of lacking the work rate, but it, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Rosmerick controls this ball, plays it across. Cabral, have we got the stupid thing where strikers and wingers are moving positions? San Nino with this in the penalty area. Across the, and Rosmerick is there at the front post. He's put it in, but I think he was offside because he was actually goal side of all of the defenders. Lapera with a free kick, or a corner, sorry, that's what they're called, and it's found its way in. Perez makes it 1-0 to Atletico, and I think that was probably against the run of play. Maybe not, they've had five shots, three on target, we've had five, and one on target, so it's been fairly even so far. We're not really doing much, we've got a throw. It's Richard Gonzalez has it in his hands, twice for some reason. Gonzalez is going to take this then. Lukaku heads it down to Cabral, into the penalty area, cross-field ball. It's fallen to Romelu Lukaku, and Lukaku does not miss those chances. His sixth goal since returning to the club. I think we've actually managed to get a good Lukaku here. I was half expecting to sign a 37-year-old Romelu Lukaku, and he wouldn't be able to do anything for us. He's got six goals. Ramos, bad throw, straight to Cabral. He's going to go into the penalty area. No, he doesn't. Rosmerick is there. And an instant second goal from Rupert Boom. We take the lead against Atletico Madrid. That goal moves us to the top of the group because Atletico did beat Copenhagen. It looks like elsewhere Copenhagen and Zenit are drawing, although there might have been a goal right at the death of the first half. So it might have been all changed. There is a corner. Looks like it's going to go our way. It's a free kick. Fair enough. Dovignac's going to take this. Five in the box. Boutacrit is there. It's found Rosmerick at the back post. And Tadai Rosmerick has made it 3-1. Now, I don't want to say that we've got a very good side, but when you can put on this kind of performance against Atletico Madrid, I think we've got a good side, haven't we? Romario plays that ball backwards. It's not the best pass. And Rosmerick is now in on goal. Can he get his second of the game? 53 minutes on the clock. And Rosmerick does get his second of the game. 4-1 against Atletico Madrid. A misplaced pass. And we are in dreamland. I've just realised as well, that was Rosmerick's hat-trick, wasn't it? 
Also, when you consider we have Mohamed Solomon playing in centre-back on a 6.4, Rosmerick is doing the business, isn't he? He's the man who's changing this game for us. Rosmerick has this back to Duvignac with a yellow card to his name. He's going to run towards goal, across to Lukaku, a rocket from Lukaku, hits it just wide of the upright. Time for some changes. We're going to do Matteo Sanino coming off. Adam Hunter is going to be coming on on the right-hand side. And do we do Rosmerick off or do we keep him? He's playing so well. He's not even unfit or anything. We'll keep him on. We've got... Who have we got on the bench? Charlie Patino. Let's bring on C. Patino. I'm not sure why I called him that, but we'll bring Patino on. That is all of our changes. Cabral is the man, obviously, to be replaced. Copenhagen have just taken the lead as well against Zenit, which means they move up into third place. Zenit at the bottom of the pile with one solitary point. Which they kind of got against us, didn't they? It looks like it is going to be a perfect 10 then for Tadar Rosmerick against Atletico Madrid. A 4-1 win. Rosmerick does get his perfect 10 rating. We are top of Champions League Group D. Now the worrying thing, what is this Montero injury? Three weeks. Okay, it's not too bad. Also, Boutacrit's out for two to three weeks as well. That's two wingers gone. We did also pick up nearly two and a half million pounds for that, which actually helped out massively because financially, we're, we're not doing so hot. There's no money in Belgian football. The only money you get in Belgian football is basically Champions League or player sales. And uh, we haven't really been doing the player sales as of late. This, I think, was possibly when we sold, uh, I can't remember his name, the, the centre-back to Aston Villa. And then another one went to Schalke, I believe. But yeah, since then, we've not been selling for big money. Back for match number two then, it is FC Copenhagen also at home, so we're only going to have the Zenit St. Petersburg game left to play at home of the final three group games, but it will be Lidinho in goal. Lids is in goal because basically we've got an injury to Acosta. It wasn't perfect timing, he's almost back, but we need to play Lids. We played Lids as well for a league game as well against Vaslan Beveren just a minute ago, which we'll talk about after this match. We've also got the usual back four, Luis, Nicolau, Solomon and Gonzalez. Patino and Cabral will be in the middle of the pitch today with Montero, San Nino on the wings, Rosmerick and Lukaku up front. There has been nearly three weeks between the last match that we played on camera and this match, which is why Montero's actually back from his injury. Speaking of injuries, obviously we're playing Charlie Patino and that is because Duvignac did pick up a three-week injury in the match between us and Vaslan Beveren. So uh, yeah, we didn't get out of that match completely injury-free. We are missing the little Croatian midfielder, but I think with Patino, we've got a good enough replacement. We are top of Group D currently. If we can pick up three points here, we are going to be very close to sealing at next round football for the Champions League. San Nino with a free kick, 10 minutes played. Solomon's there, it's a header clear. Dorami's controlled that, and Copenhagen can possibly counter-attack using the pace of the striker. Off towards the right-hand side, so many blue shirts chasing him down, desperately trying to get there. He's managed to just walk past everybody, and that's ridiculous. That is 100% a ridiculous goal. It's 1-0 to Copenhagen. So, Dorami's just literally ripped us a new one there. What amused me about that goal is actually Lukaku chased him back all the way. Solomon's hit the bar, almost, getting on the score sheet. He scored two, by the way, against Vaslan Beveren, so he knows how to score goals. Gonzalez with another corner. Solomon's there again, this time into the hands of Scorini. It's carrying on as well. Scorini's wandering about his area. You're going to do anything? Kicks it long, probably towards the goal scorer. Solomon. This is their Solomon, not our Solomon. Solomon again with this ball gets past Gonzalez. He's got Patino, I think, in front of him. It's not his Cabral. Hulse outside the area, across to this man's name. Not going to try it. Solomon's in on goal, and it's almost 2-0 to Copenhagen. Lidinho saving that one just about. This isn't how this match was supposed to go, everybody. We, should, we beat Atletico Madrid 4-1, okay? We should be able to beat Copenhagen. That goal actually puts Copenhagen to the top of Group D. Considering they were the lowest seeds... For them to be top after three matches is pretty nuts. Lidinho plays it to Nicolau. We've got about 11 minutes left of the first half to play. Charlie Patino's pass is bad and it's straight to a Copenhagen player. Now Cruz with this. Somebody steal it. Cruz is trying to get some space for himself. He's hit the outside of the goal. It's gone wide. It remains 1-0. But Copenhagen are all over us at the moment. Are we going to get a goal possibly before half time? Lukaku back to Jose Luis. Gets part. He doesn't get past Durami. Dorami's their best player and he's not getting a good rating at the moment because everything he does is a pass to a pass to a goal or something like that. They've got it on the left-hand side. Luis has tripped him up. That's possibly a second yellow card and a penalty. Wonderful. If we go in at half-time 2-0 down against Copenhagen, I think the water bottle might be being thrown. It is a penalty then. 
So, FC Copenhagen have a chance to double their lead. Come on, Lids. Come on, Lids. Do your job. You're doing all right. You're on a 7.0. You're doing well. Penalty comes in into the bottom corner. It is 2-0 to FC Copenhagen, and we have been absolutely garbage so far. Not quite at half-time. If we can get a goal here, that would make me a little bit happier. Jose Luiz, who gave away the penalty... His cross-in isn't the best. It does find Cabral, though. To Richard Gonzalez. Three in the middle. Cross it, buddy. He stopped. He's taken too long. He's played it back to Cabral. And Lucelio Cabral gets his first goal of the season. It's not a trademark screamer from Cabral, but it is a very important goal that puts us back into this game. And at half-time, then, it is 2-1 to Copenhagen, but we are playing awful. Absolutely awful. San Nino is on a 6.2. That is your day done. Butakrit is going to come on instead. We've also got Luiz playing badly. Who else isn't playing too great? The two strikers as well. Rosmerick and Lukaku, who, recent form, Rosmerick has scored about 12 goals this season and only started about six games. Solomon crosses that ball in and Ladinho must have seen that going wide because I sure as hell didn't. Ten minutes into the second half and our strikers are getting worse and worse. Rosmerick's on a 6-3, Lukaku's on a 6-4, Luiz is on a 6-4 as well. That actual shouting at them kind of fired them up a bit. Didier Montero kicks it straight into the penalty scorer. And now Cruz can get this ball forward, probably for Copenhagen. Dorami, once again, doing lots of good football for them, but not really getting much to show for it. Rosmerick's in a goal here. Rosmerick, you normally put those away like, like it's the easiest thing in the world. We've got a corner instead. Gonzalez takes it. Solomon's there at the front. Can't get on the head. And Luiz is going to pick that ball up. Keep this highlight alive or not. Sure. Luiz is coming off. Adam Hunter is coming on as a right back. And we are going to do Lukaku off for Mohamed Bakayoko. We've done all of our changes. 25 minutes left to play. Lidinho with the goal kick to Nicolau. He's going to run forward. Hunter's off to his right. So is Montero. Patino lumps it upfield. Rosmerick's going to get on the end of it. Bakayoko needs to get in the middle. Bakayoko is in the middle. He's the only one there though. Montero back to Rosmerick. He's been tackled by Retzos. Rosmerick still has it though to Montero on the floor, back to Adam Hunter, and Adam Hunter loves it. I bloody love Adam Hunter. I don't need to play him every week. All I need to do is bring him on the pitch every now and then, and he will score a very, very important goal for us. It is 2-2 against Copenhagen. Adam Hunter at right back, once again, getting a potentially very important goal for us. It's going to be a free kick for Copenhagen, though. Decent position as well for this free kick. Cruz is going to take it left-footed. Ladinho has left loads of space. And Annabelle Cruz puts it into that top corner. It's 3-2. To be fair, that was a cracking free kick. But Ladinho was not in the right position. Look where he is. He is not in the right place at all. Right, Adam, we need something special from you again, please. If we can get another worldie, would be nice. Hunter does have this ball. Gets tackled, keeps hold of it. Hunter to Patino, who I don't think's played too well either on a 6-6. Cabral finds Gonzalez. Butacrit in on goal. His effort is saved by Scarini. And that is going to carry on. It's going to carry on. Scarini kicks it long then. Off towards Adam Hunter. It's not Hunter. It's Cruz collects it. Hunter's there with him. Plays it down the line. Giabi, who scored the opening goal of the game. He's got company. Finds Cruz. Is Cruz going to make it 4? Annabelle Cruz makes it 4-2 to Copenhagen. What have we done? What Are they just playing like the best football they've ever played? Looking at their match ratings, they're really not. They're not playing particularly well. They've got a few players. Obviously, Cruz is playing well. Most players are playing badly. Our defence are playing really well, and they've let in four. We've just not turned up. We've just not taken our chances. Copenhagen have taken theirs. Don't make it five. Do not make it five game. This scoreline has certainly flattered Copenhagen. They, they, they've not deserved five goals here. We have not been very good at all. Atletico Madrid as well score a late goal against Zenit to put them into a winning position we lose 5-2 at home water bottle it's it's a water bottle that was not good that was not a good performance i don't care people who are demotivated uninspired you lost 5-2 at home when literally two weeks ago we won 4-1 at home against a much better side right i think i'm gonna have a word with some players in particular san nino i don't know what you've been doing lately but your average rating is a 7.3 because you've got a 10 rating because you scored a hat-trick. And then you've been 7-5, 6-5, 6-3, 6-2. You're getting worse and worse. Poor performance. We're going to save ourselves 16 and a half grand because you're getting a week's fine for that one. Because uh, that wasn't very good at all. I'm also going to give Lukaku a bit of a slap on the wrist. Just because that was not a good performance. See what he says. Uh, you played badly. 
My performance was excellent. Romelu. No, nobody it wasn't. And we're also going to do the same thing for Jose Luis. See what he says. I agree. See, you, Jose, you're, you're fine. You're fine. Romelu Lukaku, who gets exactly the same rating, doesn't agree with the fact that he had a poor performance. Also, while we're on this screen, you can see we beat Vaslan Beveren 3-1. Two from Solomon. Duvignac also on the score sheet. So, in terms of the league, we're top one point clear of Ghent. In terms of the Champions League, we're third. We are, we're two points off of top. We are three points off of the bottom. It's a very tight group. And with that in mind, next episode is going to be Copenhagen once again. And also, it's going to be Zenit. Or maybe, do we do Ghent? Maybe we do Ghent and Copenhagen. Maybe we do that. We'll have a league match and we'll have a Champions League game. That's what we're going to do. The episode started so well. 4-1 against Atletico Madrid. Rosmerick getting a perfect 10. And then we lose 5-2 against Copenhagen. We just crumbled completely. Copenhagen just took their chances. We didn't take ours. That's going to do it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Hit the like button. Subscribe button if you're new. Stick with your comments down below. We'll be back next time for Ghent and Copenhagen once again. And hopefully we can be put five past them in their own ground. That'll be nice. See you next time.